The CBS Radio Mystery Theater presents... G. Marshall. When the sheltered ladies of the 19th century took up their pens, many extraordinary and suspenseful tales were put down on paper. I've always had the feeling that these writers' lives, sometimes very brief, were filled with nightmares. The literary bent seemed to run in families, none more memorable than the Brontes. Yet Charlotte, Emily, and Anne had trouble finding a publisher. They wrote under assumed names, since women writers were dismissed as too gentle or frivolous to be taken seriously. And the Bronte sisters wrote heady stuff. Passion runs rampant in their novels, and an English moor at night is one of their favorite settings. Mr. Heathcliff! Mr. Heathcliff! Go back, Nellie! Get out of the graveyard. You must not disturb the dead. You didn't believe me, did you? I'll show you. (laughs) Catherine, Catherine, my love. You thought you could leave me? Never, never. No, Heathcliff, no. Let me rest a while until I find a way. mystery drama, Wuthering Heights, was adapted from the Emily Bronte classic, especially for the Mystery Theater, by Elizabeth Pennell, and stars Paul Hecht. I'll be back shortly with Act One. master of Wuthering Heights, was a kindly man with a reputation for adopting stray waifs. Over the years, he returned from London or Liverpool with surprising additions to the family. One was Nellie Dean, who has become the Earnshaw's housekeeper. But most upsetting to the household was Mr. Earnshaw's arrival with a dirty, black-haired boy who seemed more animal than human. An abandoned child picked up on the streets. Mr. Earnshaw turned him over to Nellie. I wanted nothing to do with that dreadful little boy, so I left him on the landing of the stairs, hoping he'd be gone by morning. But he crawled to Mr. Earnshaw's door and lay there like a dog. Nellie! Nellie Dean! Oh, yes, sir. What's the meaning of this? Why, I... I, uh... Why isn't this boy with the other children? They would not let him into their room. Take him there at once. He's going to be their brother. Mr. Earnshaw christened the boy Heathcliff after a child who died in infancy. Just Heathcliff. He neglected to give him his surname... And the master's son hated him from the beginning. Mrs. Earnshaw died when the children were young. And heaven knows I had my hands full. Although I warned toward Heathcliff. The other two drove me frantic with their demands. But he was uncomplaining as a lamb. I was on his side when Hindley attacked him. I suppose my father gave you the biggest horse. He said I could take whichever I wanted. So, naturally, you took the best. All right, all right, I did. But he's turned lame. I don't like him anymore. Let's exchange. I don't want a lame horse. Switch horses with me, or I'll tell your father about the three times you meet me up this week. Go ahead. Only I'll give you more than bruises to show. I'll tell your father how you boast you'll get me out of the house as soon as he dies. And I will, too. You never belonged here. I didn't ask to come. Your father brought me. What a mistake that was. I want your horse. I hope it breaks your neck. Unless I break it first. Kick out your brains. I found 
still blue, cotton bleeding, but oh, so cool and calm. You're hurt, Heathcliff. Go away. It was Hindley again, wasn't it? None of your business. Mr. Earnshaw will be angry. I don't care. I took Hindley's horse, and he's left with a lame one. I got exactly what I wanted. That's how it was with Heathcliff and Hindley. But with Hindley's sister, it was something else. Catherine could charm a statue and to bend into her will. And when Hindley was sent off to college, she had her way with all of us. I've waited for you for more than an hour. You didn't mind waiting, did you, Heathcliff? Not really. I always mind. But it's been heaven these past months. You and me and all this beautiful moor with no nasty brother to torment either one of us. Uh, I don't know why Hindley has all the luck. But we're the lucky ones. Hindley's gone. Yeah, to college. And I'm the one who needs book learning. I've never even been to school. Well, I have. And I'll teach you all I know. Uh, that's not enough. Your father owes me an education. All right. He gives you anything you want. Let's go and ask him. Well, he's always in the big room by the fire at this time of the day. In that same old chair where he pretends to read. But I know he's sleeping. Come on. I'll wake him. No, let me. He may be grumpy. Father? Father? Is something wrong? Mr. Earnshaw? His hand is so cold and his eyes... Oh, Heathcliff, my father's dead. Yes, Mr. Earnshaw was dead. And Hindley not only came home for the funeral, but he brought a young wife with him. A silly little thing without a brain in her head. And Hindley announced they had come to stay. All right, you two. I guess you know who's giving the orders around here now. It isn't too bad, is it, Heathcliff? Uh, I work in the fields like a slave. But Hindley stays out of your way. He's banished me to a room worse than the servants' quarters. But out here we're free. I'll race you across the moor. Have you, have you ever been in that house over there? No, but that's where the Lintons live. It's Thrush Cross Grange. Hey, let's go look in the window. All right. As long as they don't see us. <laughs> what a prissy looking boy. That's Edgar. And he's a stuck-up snob. Who's the pale, stupid girl? His sister, Isabella. They're always fighting, see? <laughs> he's pulling her hair. I don't blame him. Aren't you glad we don't live cooped up like that? Who's out there? We're ghosts. Ah, we're ghosts. <laughs> we're ghosts. Mama, Papa, someone's trying to break in. Let the dog out. Run, Heathcliff, run. Here, Kathy, take my hand. Oh, hurry. Oh, my leg, he's hurt. All right, Teddy, I'll get him off. Get off there. Skunker, skunker, let go. Why, why, you're a girl. Of course I'm a girl. And your dog has bitten her. Who is it, Edgar? I think it's the girl from Weathering Heights. And I'm taking her home. Leave us alone. Her ankle is bleeding, and, and she looks as though she's about to faint. I can manage. You go away. We know about you. You're that ignorant orphan boy, and you're not welcome in our house. Go back to Weathering Heights. We'll take care of Miss Earnshaw. And Nellie, she was close to fainting. And I vowed not to leave her, but they shut the door in my face. And where have you been since then? I watched at the window. And if Catherine had called me, I would have smashed it. Are you sure she's all right? All right. I saw them bathe her foot and bring her cocoa and comb her beautiful hair and wrap her in a, in a big blanket. Oh, well, I'm glad of that. Nellie, they treated her like a princess. And she, oh, she purred like a kitten. She forgot that I existed. They kept Miss Catherine at Thrushcross Grange five weeks, right up until the day before Christmas, when she was driven to our door in a carriage, and her brother greeted her. This is my little sister? Why, Kathy, Nellie, come look. They've turned my sister into a lady. Oh, Miss Catherine, you, you do look grand. Hello, Nellie, dear. 
Where's Heathcliff? I saw him slinking around out there. Heathcliff, you may come and bid Miss Catherine welcome like the other servants. Darling Heathcliff. Why, how cross you look. How funny and grim. Shake hands, Heathcliff, like a proper gentleman. I shall not. I cannot bear to be laughed at. With that, he dashed out. And before long, I heard him taking off over the moors. He didn't appear until noon next day when he came to the kitchen. Well, Heathcliff, this is a fine way to celebrate Christmas. Help me get cleaned up, Nellie. If the Lintons are coming for dinner, I'll show them I can be a gentleman. Oh, what a beautiful Christmas table. Well, I'm afraid we can't match what you did for my sister. You've, uh... You've oh. tamed our little savage. <laughs> well, there's nothing savage about the enchanting Catherine. Mm, I'm delighted at the transformation. And I'm hungry. Isn't it time to eat? That uncouth servant boy, he isn't joining us for dinner, is he? Heathcliff, what are you doing in here? Why, Hindley, he's part of the family. And doesn't he look nice? away as soon as I could, Heathcliff. You've been down there all evening dancing with him. Oh, honestly, Heathcliff, I was longing to be with you. Well, I'm not thinking about Edgar Linton. It's your brother I'm after. I'm trying to figure out how to pay Hindley back. I don't care how long I wait. I just hope he won't die before I do. Nellie, my sister-in-law is calling for you. I think her time has come. Oh, poor thing. I scarcely think she can survive the birth of her baby. Is it really that hard, having baby? Oh, good heavens, child. Not for a strapping young woman like you, but Mrs. Hindley, she has the consumption. Yes, the baby was born, and the mother died. And now Mr. Hindley was more of a tyrant than ever. In his inconsolable grief, he took to the brandy bottle, and everyone stayed out of his path, except for me and a nursemaid who tried to protect the child. I swear I'll make my own child kiss me. Where is the little beast? Now, hey! Bring me my son! Hurry, take him to his room. The master is roaring drunk, and I must hide his gun. He plays with it when he's seized with this insane madness. Get away from from my gun, Nelly Dean. Or would you rather I take care of you with this carving knife? Well, I'd rather be shot, if you please. Damn everyone in this house. I swear I'll burn it down if I don't mind to. Where's he, Cliff? About his work, as usual. Nelly, will you promise to keep a secret? Is it worth keeping? Yes, but it worries me. You must tell me what to do. Edgar Linton has asked me to marry him, and I've given him an answer. Well, then why ask my opinion? Because I've accepted him. Be quick, Nellie, and say whether I was wrong. Well, do you love Mr. Edgar Linton? Of course I do. Why? Because he's handsome and pleasant to be with. Oh, that's not a good answer. Well, because he loves me. And he will be rich, and I should like being the greatest lady of the neighborhood. Uh, then why do you look so unhappy? Because in my heart I'm convinced that I'm wrong. Well, that's very strange. I've no more business marrying Edgar Linton. And if my brother had not brought Heathcliff so low, I shouldn't have thought of it. Well, then why not change your mind? It would degrade me to marry Heathcliff. Shh. There's someone in the shadows at the other end of the room. Well, it, it couldn't have been Heathcliff, could it, Nellie? He shall never know how much I love him. Not because he's handsome, but because he's more myself than I am. He left the room when you said to marry him would be degrading. No, Nellie, no. That wasn't Heathcliff. You told me he was off in the field. I thought he was. Until I saw him behind that couch over there in the shadows. He couldn't have overheard. He couldn't. I'll find him and make sure. She ran out into the moor without a cloak. But Heathcliff's horse was not in the stable, and no one knew where he had gone. 
Catherine returned after midnight in the midst of a thunderstorm, soaked to the skin and coming down with a severe chill. Oh, Miss Catherine, you must let me help you to bed. He's gone, Nelly. He's gone. And my nightmares are coming true. You'll feel better when you've had some sleep. I'll never sleep again. I've been abandoned. Oh, it's just like my dreams. I saw myself tapping on the window, begging. Let me in. Let me in. Oh, hush, Charlie. And no one answered. And my hand broke through the glass so the blood was running down my arm. Oh, get the blood stains off, Nelly. Get the blood stains off. I told you those Bronte sisters wrote with passion. Who knows what dark thoughts and desperate yearnings they gleaned from their own lives. Emily's courage and endurance were tremendous. Yet, she only had time to write one book. For she died, like many of her characters, of consumption at the age of 30. We'll return with Act Two shortly. have changed at Wuthering Heights. For three years, there was peace such as had not been known since old Mr. Earnshaw's time. Catherine did marry Edgar Linton, moved to Thrushcross Grange, and took Nellie Dean with her. Surprisingly, Catherine got along very well at the Grange, appearing to be almost overfond of Edgar and affectionate toward his sister Isabella. On the surface, all was serene. Until one day when Catherine came running into the house. Oh, Edgar. Heathcliff's come home. That vagabond, the plowboy. I know you never liked him. But for my sake, please, Edgar, you must be friends. Shall I tell him to come up? Here. Into the parlor. Of course. It's wonderful to have him back. Here he is, Edgar. Surely you remember Heathcliff. Why, I'd... I'd never recognized... Well, sit down, sir. Heathcliff, you're so different. Your dress, all so elegant. I'm sure it's Mr. Heathcliff now. Does that please you? I'm overwhelmed. Edgar, will you please find Nellie and see if tea is ready? Well, of course. It'll be a few moments. You're more beautiful than ever. This all seems like a dream, to see you and touch you and speak to you once more. And yet, you don't deserve this reception, absent and silent for three years. Did you never think of me? More than you thought of me, I imagine. We must make plans. Oh? My plan was just one glimpse of your face. Then to settle my score with your brother, Hindley, and... Afterwards, do away with myself. Heathcliff! But your welcome has put these thoughts out of my mind. Uh, Catherine, come to the table. Do you... Do you have to go far tonight, Mr. Heathcliff? Only as far as Wuthering Heights. Oh, you're staying there. Yes, Hindley Earnshaw has invited me. My brother? He's invited you, Heathcliff? Times have changed, my dear Catherine. I've played cards with Hindley, won his money, and so have a good many others. I've had luck these past years. And your brother needs me. Oh, I thought I heard voices. Oh, you have company, I see. He's back, Isabella. Surely you remember. Oh, I don't believe I've had the pleasure of meeting this gentleman. But I remember you. The charming Isabella. You've seen Heathcliff every day, walking on the moors. And every time he's here, you tell me to stay away. And I mean it. Catherine... You want no one to be loved but yourself. You misunderstand me. I'm trying to protect you. Protect me? Simply because I find Mr. Heathcliff attractive? No. Because he's dangerous. I love Heathcliff more than ever you loved Edgar. And he might love me if, if you'd let him. Believe me, Isabella, Heathcliff and I are friends. He could never love a Linton. You are a poisonous friend. I may be the best friend you ever had. How can you say Isabella loves me? She's never done anything that spit upon me. She's lost her heart and mind to you. 
If you watch her, Heathcliff, she's a tigress. I like her too well to let you devour her. And I like her too ill to attempt it. She's her brother's heir, isn't she? You always did covet your neighbor's possessions, didn't you? Remember, this neighbor's possessions are mine. And if they were mine, they'd still be yours. Hmm. You're giving me ideas. I warned you to stay away from Isabella. And yesterday, Heathcliff, I saw you. You kissed her. I'm not your husband. You needn't be jealous of me. I'm not jealous of you. I'm jealous for you. If you like Isabella, you shall marry her. But do you like her? I can't stand her. But you... You treated me infernally. And if I have, I suppose you are after revenge. I seek no revenge on you. You are welcome to torture me for your own amusement. Just let me amuse myself in the same style. So you're going to marry Isabel? Wait till Edgar hears about this. I've heard more than I want to hear. You were listening at the door. I've had enough of Heathcliff's mischief in my house. I give you three minutes to get out. Catherine, this lamb of yours threatens like a bull. It is in danger of splitting its skull against my knuckles. By heaven, Mr. Linton, I'm mortally sorry you are not worth knocking down. The gardener and the coachman are out there, and it will take them no time to dispose of you. You'll not call for help, see? I'll lock the door. Give me that key. Get it. From the hottest part of the fire. Catherine, this is madness. You owe Heathcliff an apology. I hope he flogs you sick. I would not strike that shivering thing you prefer to me. He looks as if he's about to weep. Take your hands away from your face. I will. Like this. Quickly, Heathcliff. He's going out of the back door. He'll return with a brace of pistols and all the help he can muster. I'll crush his ribs like a rotten hazelnut. Leave, Heathcliff. If you value your life. Where is that scoundrel? He's gone. He smashed the lock with a poker. Oh, Catherine. We've been so happy, but... But he's destroying us. Look at me. Let me alone, Edgar. I can't stand any more. It's come to a showdown, hasn't it? Well, will you give up Heathcliff? Or will you give up me? Leave me alone. Can't you see I'm so tired and upset? I can scarcely stand. Where's Nellie? Yes, Miss Cathy. I... I... Oh, she's fainted. Oh, conveniently onto the couch. Well, this water will bring her around. Oh, but, but there's blood on her lips. Never mind, Mr. Linton. I know this young lady when she puts on exhibitions. Are you sure she's pretending? Mrs. Linton barred her door. And although I left trays of food, they were untouched for three days. What do you want? Let me in, Miss Catherine. I've brought you some tea and toast. I'll drink the tea, but I don't want anything else. I want to die. Oh, I've heard you say things like that before. It's foolish, and you know it. All right, I'll not die. He'd be glad. He would never miss me. Open the window, Nellie. I, I want to breathe the clean air of the moor. Well, just for a moment. You mustn't catch another cold. I want to be a girl again. Out there where life is free. I want to sleep in my old room at Wuthering Heights. I'm closing the window and you'll sleep right here. They'll bury me 12 feet under. But I won't rest until Heathcliff is with me. I never will. Mr. Linton, you must go to your wife. Why should I? She calls for no one but that black-eyed Heathcliff. No longer, sir. She's quite at peace. But she needs you, and you need her, now that you're going to be a father. For... Nellie, is that why my wife is like this? I, I've heard that women sometimes... You must treat her very gently. Of course, Nellie, of course. I'll go to her at once. It was true, the impending motherhood... But I knew that Catherine was no longer the boisterous, healthy girl she once had been. And the doctor told me why we must all take good care of her. Catherine Linton was suffering from a fever of the brain. Nellie! Uh, Nellie, who was that horseman? Your sister, Miss Isabella, sir. She... she's gone, sir. 
Gone where? Run off with Mr. Heathcliff. They're going to be married. I don't believe it. Well, Wuthering Heights is no place for Miss Isabella. Well, I have no one but Catherine on my mind. From now on, Isabella is my sister only in name. Not because I disown her, but because she has disowned me. Of course, I didn't let it go with that. I went to Wuthering Heights to see for myself what was taking place. The vast hall was filled with growling dogs. Hindley Earnshaw, in a drunken stupor, was a, a totally broken man. Penniless and at Heathcliff's mercy... And the miserable Isabella admitted her mistake and begged to be taken back to Thrushcross Grange. I saw Mr. Heathcliff in the fields and hurried out to plead with him. Oh, ho the long-nosed Nellie Dean. Couldn't stay away, could you? What have you done to poor Miss Isabella? Married her. You're not treating her like a wife. I don't need a wife. Oh, how cruel you are, Mr. Heathcliff. Whoever showed me anything but cruelty. I've always tried to be your friend. And be one now. I've heard Catherine is ill. I can help. Now, what day is Edgar away? None of your business. I'll twist your arm until it breaks. Oh. Tell me. Uh, well, sometimes he's away on Wednesday. All right. Oh. Give Catherine this letter. And let me into the house next Wednesday. I have a letter for you, Mrs. Linton. I never get letters. Well, this one needs an answer. Answer it, then. But it's from Mr. Heathcliff. <laughs> Another dream. He forgot me long ago. He wants to see you. Catherine. My dear, dear Catherine. If you are real, kiss me, Heathcliff. Even though you've broken my heart. I can't bear to see you like this. You and Edgar. Both act as though you should be pitied. You have killed me, Heathcliff. Let me hold you, Catherine. I'll make you strong again. I wish I could hold you till we both were dead. If you loved me, Catherine, what right did you have to leave me? Answer me that. You left me too, Heathcliff. Mr. Heathcliff, you must go. Mr. Linton is returning. Edgar can't harm us. Stay with me, Heathcliff. I'm going to die. Don't listen to her. She doesn't know what she says. All three of us will be damned for this. You should never have come. Mercifully, Catherine Linton had fainted. From then on, her husband seldom left her side. And if he knew that Heathcliff kept vigil in the garden day and night, he took no notice. And then, two months too soon... How is she? Well, she's a tiny one, sir, but I know all about babies, and she's going to be just fine. No, no, uh... I mean, Catherine, may I see her? Not yet. The doctor is with her. But two hours later, it was over. A blessed release, I'd say. But Mr. Linton was so stony cold with grief, he heard and spoke not a word. I found Mr. Heathcliff in the woods. No need to tell me. How did she die? Quietly as a lamb. Did she call for me? She has recognized no one since you last saw her. She lies with a sweet smile on her face. And I pray she'll wake as kindly in the other world. May she wake in torment. She's a liar to the end. Catherine Earnshaw, may you not rest as long as I am living. You said I killed you. Haunt me then. The murder do haunt their murderers. Be with me always. Drive me mad. Only do not leave me in this abyss where I cannot find you. It is unutterable. I cannot live without my life. I cannot live without my soul. At the wake, Edgar Linton kept silent vigil by the open coffin. And during the brief moments he left the room, Heathcliff was there, long enough to open a locket on a chain around Catherine's neck and put in a lock of his own black hair. 
Our gothic drama is by no means over, and I'll return presently with Act Three. continue by introducing you to the characters of the next generation. Heathcliff continues to live even without his soul. His ill-treated wife Isabella produced a sickly son whom he abhorred from birth. Heathcliff's old enemy Hindley Earnshaw has died in a drunken debauch leaving his son Harriton at Wuthering Heights where Heathcliff is now in total control. At Thrushcross Grange, Edgar Linton lavishes full affection upon his daughter, named after her mother, Catherine, a sheltered girl who knows nothing of her neighbors. No need to follow, Nellie. You're too slow. Miss Cathy, don't go up on that crowd. Papa says there are nests up there, and I want to see the moorhen's eggs. I'll just climb that rock. Oh, I'm about to catch a little poacher, am I? Oh, you startled me. I thought this was my father's land. Uh, Not here on the heights. Who are you? I've seen that young man over there before. Is he your son? Oh, no, no. He's not my son. But I do have one, and you'd know him if you saw him. Miss Cathy, come away. I might have known you'd be here, Nellie Dean. Come along, both of you, to my house for tea. Oh, I'd like that. Then I can meet your son. No, Mr. Heathcliff. This is wrong. He... He doesn't look like your son. But he is, my dear. And when you were a child, your father tried to adopt him after his mother died. Why, you... You're my cousin Linton. And you've grown up. So have you. Uh, Where have you been? It's Nellie's fault. She never brought me here. Linton, you must come and see me at Thrush Cross Grange. Well, that's too far to go. I, I, I couldn't walk four miles. Oh, that renegade Harriton covers the distance in no time. Harriton? He can't even read or write. I've scarcely heard him open his mouth. Oh, he, he talks, but what he says is not fit for a young lady's ears. He rides on the moor, and sometimes I long to join him. Oh, Stay away from him, Kathy. Come visit me. But why, Father? Why can't I go back to Wuthering Heights? I promised Linton I would. Well, that house is evil. My sister might be living if it weren't for that man who twists everything to his own will. Mr. Heathcliff seemed very cordial. Someday you'll understand. But for now I must make a rule. You may not return... And I've instructed Nellie to see that you don't. (coughs) Oh, Papa, you're not well. (coughs) Only a bad cold. Now be my sweet girl. And forget all about your visit to Weathering Heights. Miss Cathy, you've been sending books and notes to Master Linton, and he's been doing the same. I promised to go back to see him. I had to explain why I couldn't keep my promise. This much of an explanation... Where did you get those letters? From your desk. And they sound like love letters. I'm lonely, Nellie, just as Linton is. What is there for me to do with my father too sick to talk? And you going to bed every evening with the birds? I almost felt sorry for her. But I didn't. Not then. For somehow she got word that Mr. Heathcliff was away. And as soon as I went to my room, she was off on a horse for Wuthering Heights. Linton! Where are you? Oh, Kathy. I I knew you'd come. I'm I'm in here. You look better today. I don't feel better. I cough all the time. But now you're here to take care of me. Poor Linton. I wish you were my brother. Your brother? Your, your your father says we should get married. Did he make you write those letters to me? Not exactly, but... But what? Stop questioning me. You're making me cough. Don't leave me today, Kathy. When your letters stopped, I thought I'd lost my only friend. I won't be seeing you for a while. My father needs more looking after than you do. 
Nellie Dean. You're not welcome at the Grange, Mr. Heathcliff. No, do I intend to sit for inside. I understand that Edgar Linton is dying. He is gravely ill. Yes, then we have no more time to waste. Get your mistress and come with me. We dare not go to Wuthering Heights. My worthless son has gone so far as to struggle onto the heath. He can walk no further and implores Cathy to come to him. She's at her father's bedside. Well, get her away. This is more important. Get up and act like a man. Father, I'm so tired. Help him, Catherine. That boy needs a doctor. Go on, go on, Cathy. Help him. My father won't allow me back in the house unless you come with me. Stand up to him, Linton. I, I'm too weak to stand up to anyone. Help me, Kathy. My father shudders if I touch him. I'll help you only to the door. Please. As far as the chair in the big room. I'd wait for you out here, Miss Kathy. Get in there, Nellie Dean. My house is not stricken with a plague. I'm feeling hospitable. You call that hospitality, locking us in? Sit down. I'll get you some tea. I'm not afraid of you. Give me that key. I wouldn't eat or drink if I were starving. Well, the wild cat bears its claws. Stand back, Kathy Linton, or I'll knock you down. Nellie and I are leaving this house. If you won't give me the key, I'll... Oh, the creature has teeth like a mad dog. I have the key, Nellie. Uh, not for long. Oh, you <laughs> villain, stop that. Get used to it, young lady. You're staying in this house. And tomorrow, I'll be your father. Let me go home, Mr. Heathcliff. I promised to marry Linton. But if I stay now, Papa will be miserable. Nothing would please me more than to make your father miserable. I can keep you both prisoners here until your father dies. Mr. Heathcliff, you're a cruel man, but you're not a fiend. I'll marry Linton within the hour if you'll let me go to Thrush Cross Grange for a short time afterwards. Have you never loved anyone in your life? Not anybody, ever. Stop looking at me like that. I detest you. While we were locked in that house, the marriage contract was drawn up and Cathy became Mrs. Linton Heathcliff. From now on, that nasty complaining invalid is your sole responsibility. How do you like being his nursemaid? With my father gone, Linton is all I have in the world. I know he loves me. And for that reason, I love him. Mr. Heathcliff, nobody will cry for you when you die. Late that night, I was roused by a frightened servant who had seen a ghostly light in the family graveyard. Now, I'm not frightened by ghosts, but I was afraid of what might be going on. Tonight, you won't send me away. Mr. Heathcliff! Mr. Heathcliff! Go back, snooping Nellie Dean! In the name of heaven, Mr. Heathcliff, let her lie in peace. I respected her wishes up till now, but this time it's different. I don't know what you're doing, Mr. Heathcliff, uh, but I beseech uh, you to stop that digging. Not until I finish. Well, then I'll go for help. There are laws against desecrating a grave. There are no laws against freeing a soul. But her soul is already free. Not yet, Nellie Dean, but it soon will be. You dare not break into the coffin. Only on one side, facing the spot where I'll be buried. Oh, stop it! Now I'll replace the earth. And if you are my friend, I charge you that when I am dead, you will see that my coffin is open on this side toward hers. was not much more than a bride when she became a widow. Mr. Heathcliff had complete possession of both Wuthering Heights and Thrushcross Grange, and Cathy had nowhere else to go. Besides me, she had but one possible ally. Miss Cathy, why don't you make friends with your cousin Harriton? Savage creature hates me as much as my father-in-law does. Oh, I've seen him following you. I've even seen him protect you against Mr. Heathcliff. Protect me? He seldom opens his mouth except for blasphemy. Oh, he's afraid you'll laugh at his crude speech. Why don't you lend him some of your books? Because he can't read. You could teach him. No, no, Harry. 
Hilton. You pronounce it this way. What the uh, devil are you two doing here, Hilton? The horses need tending. Kathy, you're needed in the kitchen. And as for you, Nellie Dean... Yes, Mr. Heathcliff. You engineered this, didn't you? Oh, you've made him like yourself, Mr. Heathcliff. I've tried my best to crush him. And I will do everything to keep those two apart. He tried, but they grow closer. And suddenly, an abrupt change came over Mr. Heathcliff. He became as silent as Harriton and refused to join us for meals. Finally... He had not eaten for so long that... Are you ill, Mr. Heathcliff? No. No, I am not. Starvation is an invitation to death. I have neither fear, nor presentiment, nor hope of death. With my constitution, I'll be above ground until my hair is white. Well, you won't last long if, if you refuse to eat. I want this place to myself. Get out of my way. And keep Harriton and that other one from coming near me. We kept out of his way. But I heard him pacing in his room, uttering strange oaths. Until one evening, there was absolute silence. Kathy, just like her mother, was out on the moor and it started to rain. Kathy! Kathy! I'm just coming in. But, Nellie, you know that room you say was my mother's? The window is open and the shutter is banging back and forth. Oh, we'll see about that. Come, bring the candle. I've never been allowed in this room. Hold the candle higher. See? The window is open. And the rain is soaking the bed. <gasps> oh, no. No. Leave the room, Miss Cathy. Run and get Harriton. Mr. Heathcliff was lying there, stiff and cold and quite dead. I quickly pulled a blanket over his face, for he had a frightful, lifelike gaze of, of wild exultation. about violence. Those 19th century ladies spared nothing of human torture. It is said that to this day, on the heaths and moors near Wuthering Heights, Heathcliff walks, and a woman is his constant companion. I'll have a further comment shortly. sister had a vivid imagination. She wondered how Emily conjured up anyone as sinister as Heathcliff. She even doubted if it was right or advisable. But she declared, the writer who possesses the creative gift owns something that, at times, strangely wills and works for itself. If the result be attractive, the world will praise you who little deserve praise. If it be repulsive, the same world will blame you, who almost as little deserve blame. Our cast included Paul Hecht, Bryna Rayburn, Russell Horton, Roberta Maxwell, and Lloyd Batista. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. This is E.G. Marshall inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time, pleasant dreams. <laughs>